long, long time ago, there was an enchanted palace in the heart of a deep, dense, dark forest. One day, two men lost their way in that jungle. Where are we? We have been walking all day and we still have not been able to find a way out of this forest. Will we ever get home? Don't worry, mate. We are just tired and hungry. It is getting dark. Let us rest for the night. I am certain we shall find a way out of here in the morning. Who knows what wild animals lurk in the dense darkness of this place. We cannot sleep on the ground. There. We should be safe up there. The tree is big enough, and its branches are wide enough for us to rest comfortably on them. And we shall be quite safe from any wild animals there. So, hungry, tired, and scared, the two men spent the night on a tree to keep safe from wild animals. In the morning when the first ray of the sun shone, from their vantage point on the tree, they saw the palace. Both of them headed towards it. What in the world is that? Right in the middle of the forest. Maybe we can find someone there who will show us the way out of this place. And give us some food and drink. Let's go! Soon, the men were at the door of the enchanted palace. There was no one around. One of them found a bell and rung it. As soon as the bell rung, the door opened on its own. Astonished, the two men walked inside. Welcome! You must be tired and hungry. Sit down. And so this continued for a long time. Many men went to the enchanted palace and were made to fall into a deep, never-ending slumber. One day, a prince got lost in the same forest. He slept on the same tree and in the morning he saw the enchanted palace and headed towards it. As soon as he rang the bell, the door opened and the prince entered. Welcome. You must be tired and hungry. Sit down. Who are you? And what are you doing in this deep, dark, dense forest? Why do you bother? You are a lost, tired traveler. I am certain that all you wish for is to reach home as soon as possible. Your demeanor is regal, and your bearing is compassionate. Lady, are you in any kind of trouble? Is there anything I can help you with? Why won't you eat? Aren't you tired and hungry? Rest a little first. I cannot rest till I know that all is well with you. Why is a lady like you relegated all alone in this dark forest? Please tell me. I know that there is something wrong. I shall not eat or rest till you tell me how I can help you. As soon as the prince said these words, everything changed. Hundreds of men came to this palace seeking food, shelter and help. But not one of them was bothered enough to ask me about me until today. And by such a simple act of concern and compassion, you have broken the spell I suffered for 16 years. Thank you. A spell? Before I say anything more, I have a task. They have all reached their homes and families. What is going on here? I shall tell you everything tomorrow, but now I have to go. I shall be back tomorrow morning. Take care of him while I am gone. I shall see you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Make sure you are awake and ready then. Goodbye. All night, the prince kept thinking of the enchanted princess. He had fallen deeply and helplessly in love with her and could not wait till morning to see her again. But someone had something else in mind. As the servant was getting the prince's coat ready, 
he inserted into it a prick that would make the prince fall asleep. Where are you, my sweetheart? Where is the prince? Oh, I tried to get him ready, but he refuses to wake up and is still asleep. What? How is that possible? If he is not asleep, then where is he? See for yourself. Please, tell him I shall be back same time tomorrow. And if he is not awake and ready, then he shall never be able to see me again. I shall do as you say, my lady. The prince was horrified to learn that he had been asleep when the princess had come. He resolved to stay awake that entire night. But at daybreak, the same thing happened all over again. The servant put the prick once more in his coat and tricked the prince into falling asleep again as the princess arrived. Where is he? Why isn't he waiting for me here? He refused to wake up, my lady. What? How can this be? Well, if he is not asleep, where is he? See for yourself. I can't. I shall never be able to see him again. Will you please just give this to him for me? I shall do as you say. The servant gave the sword to the prince. The prince was horrified at the thought that he would never be able to see his love again. His ailing heart refused to give up on her. So he wandered in the forest for months, hoping that someone someday would show him how to find his beloved princess again. One day, as he was wandering in the forest, he reached a patch of thorns and his cloak was caught in them. Unable to free himself, he slashed his cloak with the sword and the sun's light fell upon the blade. The words glowed to life. Princess of the Blue Mountains? The Blue Mountains? That is where I shall find her. But where are these mountains? Who will help me? So the prince wandered in the forest, wondering who would know about the Blue Mountains. One night, he came upon a strange crooked hut. He went to it and knocked. If you want food, knock thrice. If you want a place to rest, knock thrice more, but if you want knowledge, walk away. What knowledge do you seek? I want to know where the Blue Mountains are. Well, for that, you will have to come in, have some food, rest for the night, and in the morning, I shall open my book of everything and tell you where the Blue Mountains are. Do you agree? I shall do whatever you ask me to. Just tell me where the Blue Mountains are. Very well, come in. So the prince ate with the monk and slept in the house. At the first ray of dawn, the prince was up. He went out. Ah, you were up already. You promised you will tell me where the Blue Mountains are. You are a determined man. Very well. No, there is no mention of the Blue Mountains here. Well, there has to be. I have met the princess of the Blue Mountains. Hmm, well, don't lose heart. In the book of everything, they also tell you how to get answers for questions this book has no answers to. Wait! That would be page number 12,367. Ah, here! Birds! Birds? Well, birds fly high above this world, over valleys and mountains. If there is any place to be known of, birds will know it. I shall call all the birds of the skies and ask them where they came from. At least one of them shall have come from the Blue Mountains. Then do it! Please do it! So the monk went out of his little hut and murmured some sacred spells. And soon the sky was full of birds of all kinds who landed before him as he asked each of them where they had come from. 
but not one of them had come from the Blue Mountains. One by one, all the birds flew off. I don't think this place called Blue Mountains exists. It must. It has to. I have met the Princess of the Blue Mountains. You called? What took you so long? There is such great music playing all the time on the Blue Mountains that I couldn't hear your call clearly. You are from the Blue Mountains? Yes, the princess is getting married to the royal wizard's son tomorrow. What? Poor thing, the princess. Years ago, the wizard had cast a spell on her for he wanted her to marry his son. Why would you not marry my son? He is smart, he is handsome. There is no one more suitable for you in the whole world. But I do not love him. What is love? But just a word that spells nonsense? Where do you hope to find this love that you speak of? Love is everything, and if it is true, it will find me no matter where I am. Are you willing to prove it? Yes. Then fine. I shall put a spell on this kingdom. Time will stop for 16 years, in which you shall stay in an enchanted palace in the heart of a dense, dark forest, not as a princess, but as a woman in a veil. You will have just one servant to take care of the palace. If indeed there is something called true love, your love will come to you in the enchanted palace. He will be tired and hungry. He will not be able to see your face, but will still be worried about your well-being and refuse to eat and drink before he ensures it. The moment a man like that comes to the palace, the spell will be broken. I agree. And not just that. You will leave him as soon as the spell is broken and come here for your chariot. If he is indeed your true love, he should not be able to sleep for thought of you, and you shall find him ready and waiting for you the next morning. I agree. And if at the end of 16 years, you still haven't found your true love, <laughs> you shall marry my son. I shall. Very well then. I shall proceed to prepare the spells. Father, what if she does find her true love? That is why I'm sending you with her. You will ensure to keep her true love sleeping with this prick. You will be her servant. The poor princess does not know that she has been tricked. And tomorrow is the first day after the 16 years. As promised, the princess must marry the wizard's son. Kind bird, please, please take me to her. It is I who she waits for, please. How will I carry you over my back? And how do I believe you? This is an enchanted sword. Draw a flying chariot with it, and then I shall lead you to the Blue Mountains. The prince did as he was told. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You will need proof, son. Take this. This bag contains the sacredness of truth. Whosoever you sprinkle it with will have to speak the truth. The chariot flew high over mountains and valleys when the prince saw them, the blue mountains right before him. Eagle, take me to where the princess is right now. Princess, you cannot say no. You must marry my son. He waited for you fair and square for 16 years. He did wait, but not fair and square. What do you mean? The servant you sent to the palace and the prick you gave him? Stories, tall stories. What proof do you have? You are my proof. Yes, the servant was actually my son who tricked the prince into sleeping every time you went to see him. 
The prince is indeed your true love, and I am a mean old wizard who wanted this entire kingdom for myself, and hence I wanted to marry my son. I should be put in jail, and you should marry the prince. And how do we take the ability to do magic from you so that you can never do anything evil again? Just take my staff. So the wizard was put in jail, and the prince and the princess were married in grand splendor. Both had found their true love at last. My love, thank you for believing in me. Had it not been for your sword, I should have never been able to find you. When the servant told me you were asleep, my heart would not believe that you did not love me. So I left you a clue and knew that you would find a way to come to me. And my heart was right. True love does find you no matter where you are. And the prince and the princess of the Blue Mountains lived together, lived in true love, lived happily ever after. <laughs>